Hello everyone. Welcome to Achievers IS classes. Let's begin a discussion on the current events of 25th January 2019. The first issue is regarding the Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Amendment Act. The Amendment Act was passed to nullify a judgment that diluted the stringent provisions of the SCST Act. As you are aware, the Supreme Court had ruled that anticipatory bail cannot be denied to an individual accused of a crime under the Prevention of Atrocities to SCST Act, which led to several protests in which several of them died and property worth crores of rupees were destroyed. Following this, the government bought in the Amendment Act to restore the stringent provisions of the original 1989 SCST Act and thereby nullify the judgment of the Supreme Court. The government has said that there was no increase in the atrocities on these communities which have been denied several civil rights for generations and subjected to indignities, humiliations and harassment, thereby making the act necessary to protect the interests of the vulnerable communities. On that note, let's move to the next issue, which is regarding the recent breakout of the H1N1 influenza virus. The seasonal outbreak of such influenza virus poses a significant public health challenge with the number of recorded cases by the Integrated Disease Surveillance Program reaching around 42,000 over the past six years. The spike in infections during the first two weeks of the current year also calls for an effective plan to contain it with Rajasthan being the worst affected state so far. Now that we have better understanding of the nature of the virus and the availability of suitable vaccine, state governments have no excuse for failing to reduce the spread of the virus and also ask what preventive measures were put in place based on their previous experience. Large scale vaccination covering high risk groups such as health workers, people with respiratory disorders, diabetics and elderly could reduce the impact of viruses in several states such as Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Gujarat, etc. All of which reported high number of cases in the previous years. Therefore, a universal preventive program should be considered and also the Union Health Ministry should put out an advisory on the right vaccine as most public health programs are not prepared for a mass adoption of the vaccine. Also, the issue of non-availability of sufficient doses of the vaccine as well as profiteering due to high demand have not been addressed so far. Therefore, it should be made part of the public health system through schemes such as the Ayushman Bharat which can easily provide vaccine to everyone using the public and private institutions. Further, campaigns to educate the public through mass media, especially on the respiratory etiquette and risk reduction can help cut transmission of the virus and at the same time upgrading the existing vaccines by enabling better communication and information access to researchers through open access databases can provide genetic insights and help in tracking down the mutations of the virus. Lastly, the availability of antiviral drugs such as the Oseltamavir should be ensured all of which requires a concerted public health push to tackle the periodic outbreaks of such influenza virus. On that note, let's move on to the next issue which is regarding the launch of military satellite Microsat R by the Indian Space Research Organization. The mission is unique because ISRO used the modified version of the PSLV with just two strap-on motors rather than its normal configuration of using six strap-on motors. Further, the fourth stage of the rocket has been built in such a way so as to provide a platform to do technology demonstrations and also carry out science experiments by students. This would enable any agency that wants to conduct experiments in space to use the fourth stage till it disintegrates naturally. The next issue is regarding the bilateral relations between India and South Africa. India and South Africa will update this strategic partnership by agreeing on a comprehensive roadmap on their future engagements. The strategic partnership between the two countries, which is called the Red Fort Declaration, was signed in the year 1997 and officials have said that all aspects of the partnership would be reviewed and updated with a three-year plan of action on security cooperation, trade and investment, tourism, 
blue economy agriculture science and technology products the two sides are also expected to explore new defense deals in the backdrop of lifting of a ban on the south african defense firm denel that was barred from doing business in india this was done after the cbi filed a closure report and the supreme court has dismissed the corruption charges against the company the south african president he is also the chief guest of the republic day parade thereby highlighting the importance of the bilateral relations between the two countries the final issue in news today is regarding the report titled al qaeda the nucleus of jihad in south asia which was brought out by the think tank the sufan center the us based think tank report has said that al qaeda in the indian subcontinent was exploiting the growing incidents of violence against muslims in india and the attacks in the name of cow vigilantism in order to recruit new cadres and thereby incite indian muslims to join what is being called as a fight for their honor the study has also said that the situation in kashmir has taken on an unprecedented turn due to the region responding to the appeals of the groups like al qaeda however the study has been rejected by certain observers saying that the researchers appear to have extrapolated certain isolated instances and have said that indian islam is based on the rich sufistic traditions of pluralism inclusivism and composite nationalism therefore the wave of the al qaeda in the 1990s and the 2000s did not impact the indian muslims and also the impact of the islamic state is minimal in our country thereby dismissing the report's premise on the increasing vulnerability of indian muslims to recruitment by the al qaeda on that note i'm wrapping up today's news analysis do like share and comment to support this initiative thank you for watching have a nice day